Hi everyone, welcome to Nitrania Game Club. My name is Branis Alberets and you're watching Game in a Nutshell, a series of videos designed to teach how to play various board games. Today, we'll take a look at a very small and very nice looking tile laying game called Majolica. First, randomly place 16 large tiles on the board. Then place the bonus tokens onto the city hall board. These six spots will be populated in any player count. With higher player counts, also these other spots will be populated as indicated by these symbols. Then each player will take one player board. Shuffle the four starting cards, those are the ones with the value 3 in the black background. Give one of these cards to each player, and players have to put it into one of these slots. Any unused starting cards can be returned back into the box. Then shuffle all the remaining cards and draw and place six of them next to the game board. Randomly determine the starting player and the game can begin. The game is played in rounds. Each round the starting player goes first and then all other players in the clockwise direction. On your turn you will select tiles from the game board, place them on your player board and run the workshops. You will also try to collect more of these objective cards and once you fulfill the requirements on the objective you will score designated points. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the winner. When you select tiles you have three options. First you can take one contiguous row or column on the outer edge of the game board. It has to be contiguous, so you cannot take all these three tiles because there's one tile missing here. But you can take these two tiles as a contiguous column. You can take this row, this column, this row, and you can also take this tile as a one contiguous column. When these two tiles would be removed, then this becomes the outer edge of the game board. Second option is to take one tile from the outer edge of the game board, any one tile, let's say this one, and any one face-up card. Do not refill the card supply yet, it will happen at the end of the round. Third option would be to take any one tile from the outer edge and rearrange the design cards on your player board. When you take the large tiles from the game board, Take the corresponding small tiles from the supply and place these tiles into any one workshop. You have to place them all in one workshop, you cannot split them. If you would decide to place them into a workshop which doesn't have enough free spots, you place as many as you want and discard the rest. Then take all those large tiles and place them face down next to the game board. If later in the game a player would decide to take these two tiles, he may even decide to take these tiles and place them into this workshop, although it's already full. He can place any of these tiles to this workshop and discard the rest. So for example, I can take this one, place it here and discard the yellow and blue into the supply. When you take a tile and you decide to take one card with that tile, you have to place that card into one of the free slots in your workshop. Of course, you also have to place the tile and it doesn't have to be the same workshop where you placed your design card. When you decide to rearrange your design cards and some of those cards already have tiles on them, you rearrange the cards with those tiles as well. However, if you decide to take one tile and one new design card and all your slots are already full, you can take the new card and replace an existing card. However, the existing card will be discarded even with any tiles on it. Of course, don't forget to place your tile you have just taken. The final phase of a player's turn is to run the workshops. Let's say a player would decide to take this column. He would take these three small tiles and obviously he wants to place them in the first workshop. Because if these conditions are fulfilled, the workshop will run. This symbol means that this workshop has to have three tiles of one color and three tiles of another color. So for example, three red and three green. Next workshop will run if it has 
two tiles of one color, two tiles of another color and two tiles of a third color. This workshop will run if it has two tiles of one color and two tiles of another color. So even though it's full at the moment, it cannot run because it doesn't fulfill these conditions. And the last workshop will run if it has four tiles of the same color. So now the player has these three small tiles. He will obviously place red and green into this workshop and discarding those yellow tiles. Now that the workshop is full and the conditions are fulfilled, you must run that workshop. First of all, you must take one tile and move it to this design cards. That's what this black shovel symbol means. So I can take the red tile and place it onto the design card. Now the white shovel means that I can take another tile and move it to this card as well. So I may take a green tile and move it to the design card. Now all the remaining tiles have to be moved into another workshop. If this workshop was empty and I move my four remaining tiles to this workshop, my turn is over. However, if this workshop would already contain some tiles, I can take these four tiles and replace some of the existing tiles with the new ones. Now that this workshop is actually full and I fulfill these conditions because I have two tiles of one color, two tiles of another and two tiles of a third color, I must run this workshop as well. Looking at the symbology below, I must move one of the tiles to this card so I can take the yellow tile and move it onto the card and then there are two white shovels which means I can move two additional tiles so I will definitely decide to take the red tile and the green tile. Now again the remaining tiles have to be moved to another workshop. This workshop needs two tiles of one color and two tiles of another color so I can move the red tile into this workshop and discarding everything else and now I must also run this workshop. So again, there's a black shovel here, which means I need to move one of my tiles to the design card. And this symbol means that I must discard one of these tiles. So I may choose a red one and discard it. Now again, I move the remaining tiles to the next workshop. And again, because it's full and I have four tiles of the same color, I run the last workshop as well. This symbol means that I need to take one of the tiles and place it to the city hall. I take the tile from the fourth workshop and I have to replace one of these tiles over here. If there are any purple tiles present, I first need to take that purple tile and replace it with one of my tiles. Later in the game, when the purple tiles are gone, players will take these one point tiles. The purple tile has to be placed into the first workshop and as this symbol indicates one of the tiles have to be discarded and the remaining two tiles will be placed back into the first workshop. Purple tile acts as a wild tile and it can have any color. You can change the color of that tile anytime you want so if it suits you now it can be blue but you can change it to green or red in your next turn. Purple tile can never be placed onto the design cards. Purple tiles can never be discarded using the fragmentation symbol. And when the purple tile is present in the last workshop and it has to be moved to the first one, it is discarded into the supply. These one point tiles are never placed onto the workshops. They're just simply placed somewhere next to the player board and they're worth one victory point. When you run the workshop and the result of running the workshop is that your design card will be completely filled with the required tiles, you can score that design card. First, finish running the workshop. So you may place another tile onto the design card, but there's no space. So you have to move remaining tiles to the next workshop and discard the excess tiles. Now take the design card, discard all those tiles on that card and place the scored card next to your player board. If you manage to score a design card with this symbol, take any one tile from the supply and add it to any of your workshops. If there are less than four tiles on the game board, the round is over. 
Pass the first player token to the player to the left. Reshuffle the large tiles and refill the board. And refill the design cards up to six face-up cards. The starting player can begin the new round. If any player has five or more design cards scored at the end of the round, the game is over. Count up the points from those scored design cards. Then for every two tiles on unfinished design cards, score one victory point and add the victory points from these one point bonus tiles. If you play with any expansions, add the points from other components as well. The player with the most points is the winner. The game comes with several expansions. These are Bloom tokens and if you manage to run all the workshops in one turn, take one of those tokens and it's worth one victory point. These are Kaleidoscope design tiles and these empty spots can be filled with tiles of any color. These are mission cards and at the start of the game place face up as many cards as there are players plus one. So in a three player game you would have four cards. Now from the last player in the player order each player picks one card. If a player manages to fulfill the objectives, he would score these number of points at the end of the game. And that's how you play Majolica. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. If you like the show, please subscribe. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Berec and see you next time.